Hello everyone, welcome to Talk Wrestling here on NoDQ.com and of course the NoDQ YouTube channel and of course the entire NoDQ network if you will, which is for the low price of just zero, because we're awesome like that. First question today comes from Instagram, it is from at I am Dustin Grimes. WWE has signed a lot of Ring of Honor guys within the past year or so, who else is left for WWE to sign? Personally, I like Kyle O'Reilly or Adam Page. Um, I like O'Reilly too, I really do, I think he's a great talent, so is his partner Bobby Fish. I don't see Bobby Fish really working with WWE though. He's got kind of a weird look to him I guess is the best way I can say it. But he's an awesome wrestler so they could always do wonders with his look too. You never know. Um, Adam Page is also a great worker. I just don't know if um, his character in Ring of Honor is interesting. He's kind of like a BJ Whitmer's like, um, like main understudy I guess is the best, thing I can, best way I can put it. But I think if he's given the right um, thing to work with in WWE as far as the right character, he'd be awesome doing anything because he's an awesome wrestler. Um, another guy who's good is Adam Cole. He's unbelievable how good Adam Cole is. I can't say enough about how good he is. Uh, former Ring of Honor champion, former PWG champion, um, the longest reigning PWG champion in history, actually. He held the title for like 500-something days, I think, is what I remember reading. I have been in PWG in years, so I don't know for sure. Um, he's good. Both guys in the kingdom are good. Uh, Bennett and, uh, and Taven, they're awesome. Um, Daniels and Kazarian would be great to have a chance at WWE, especially Kazarian, who got kind of a screwy finish with him in, in the Cruiserweight division. Um, there's a lot of guys in Ring of Honor that would be really good in WWE, but they're doing so well in Ring of Honor now that why, why would they bother to leave something so great and so awesome that they're doing now to maybe get a lesser role in the big the big pond. Another one on Instagram at Liam underscore Buckland. Hey Jeff, when do you think Finn Balor will make his Raw or SmackDown debut, and who do you think he should feud with? Followed you for years in the UK. Well, thank you from the UK. I love hearing from people from all over the world. The UK is one of my favorites. I still want to go there at some point. So if you ever see a a free flight to the United Kingdom out there, let me know. I'll go visit. I'll do, I'll take Doug Wrestling back there. I'll bring my camera with me. What the hell? Um, as far as Finn Balor making his main roster debut, um, they want to, as I mentioned with Samoa Joe on the last show, or the recent show, um, they want to keep him in NXT as long as possible to make sure he develops the right way and make sure he gets over the right way with the right crowd behind him, either as a good guy or a bad guy. And then when he's ultimately ready, they can just pull the trigger and turn him loose on the main roster and have him be a great Intercontinental U.S. champion. I don't think he'll ever be the World Heavyweight Champion. I'm going to be honest because he he's not a he's not a big time WWE heavyweight guy like Cena, like Rollins, like Orton, like you know uh, Owens might be. But Finn Balor has a great potential to be a awesome WWE superstar in um, in due time. But he's doing awesome things as a champion right now. So let's let that lie. All right, this one's from Instagram, at Mark underscore Bucks. Hi, Jeff. Great show. Imagine you were a WWE story writer, and Vince asked you to plan the main event for Survivor Series. He wants to be as big as Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. What would you book? Keep up the great work. Thank you. Um, I say Survivor Series is such a, such a big show. You gotta have something that's like you said, as big as Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar, as big as the World Championship, as big as something like that. I would honestly book a decisive one-on-one -on -one match between the Undertaker and Seth Rollins for the championship, regardless if Seth Rollins is champion or not. Make that the championship match because. He Undertaker deserves to have one last shot at the championship, and that's going to be a very unpopular opinion with a lot of you. But Undertaker deserves that. Undertaker deserves to be the guy. He deserves to be the man at least once more before he walks away. That's just my own personal thoughts on that. At Cam underscore Johnson one two three four five. Will WrestleMania ever come to Charlotte? I'm assuming Charlotte, North Carolina, not Charlotte the Worker. Um. There is a stadium in the Carolinas where the Panthers play, um, so I can see it coming to that stadium, but I don't know if it's a if it's a big enough marquee stadium to warrant 
WrestleMania coming there. Charlotte is a awesome city. I've heard great things about Charlotte, North Carolina. Ric Flair lives there. He's been there since the 70s, and it's 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 a hotbed for wrestling. At least it was during the Mid Atlantic WCW days. But I don't know if it's going to be a big enough city to warrant WrestleMania coming to town. And I think that's unfortunate, but it's just the reality of the situation. I don't know if Charlotte's not like a New Orleans or a Los Angeles or a New York City or you know even in, a, in the MetLife Stadium area or even you know Central Florida where it's going to be a big enough draw. It'll still sell out WrestleMania, but I don't know if it'll draw enough interest in the area, if that makes any sense. Let's see. This one's from Twitter at mjohnson276. What did you think of the Brian Pillman, Goldust, Marlena Love Triangle storyline? How would have it have ended? Um, that's a good question. I like that question. Thank you, uh, Mr. Johnson. Um, Mr. Johnson's my teacher. Um, I don't know how it would have ended. I, I, I know Dustin has talked about this on TV. I still don't remember what he said. And I remember I didn't, actually reading his book right now. Um, I don't know where it would have gone ultimately. I know that they were going toward him and Terry breaking up anyway because they were breaking up real life. So it only really made sense for them to be apart in storyline. Um, maybe Brian would have ultimately won Terry over and you know garnered her love in that way, which would have been weird. But we'll never know because Brian passed away, and it was very unfortunate that it happened. But um, it, uh, it it was a great storyline. I thought it was very. Um, uh, provocative for its time. I mean, even in 97, they were still building toward more adult stuff. They already had the Pillman gun incident the year before, but that story was really titillating. It was really like, whoa, they just went there. Holy shit, that was pretty crazy. Uh, let's see here. This is from at SSJ for Vigenta1986. How well do you think the Vod Villains gimmick will translate on the main roster? Um, I don't. I think it's a awesome gimmick. I love the VOD villains. I love Gotch. I've followed Gotch for years. He was to work with his income now. I work with uh, Epic War. Um, and I like uh, Aiden English. And I like Blue Pants being with them for SummerSlam. That was, or for Brooklyn, that was great. But I don't think the gimmick itself would translate very well to the main roster. It's not, it's, it's very gimmicky. Like, even too gimmicky, I think, for the main roster. And that's going to be very unpopular for me to say. And it's going to be very like, oh, he's just being a typical WWE fan. Doesn't understand. I, I do understand. I get it. I, I get that they're popular. I get. I like them. I like them a lot. But I don't see that particular gimmick really translating well to the main WWE roster, at least at this time. It's not as cartoonish as the Bob Villains gimmick. If they wrestle just as themselves and don't have too much of the, too much of the, you know, uh, the uh, vaudeville stuff fine. But if they do the overly vaudeville and gimmick, then it's going to be, it's going to fall flat. This is from at Kalen James. Who are your favorite WWF, WCW, and ECW champions from 1994 or 2000? Okay. My favorite WWF champion in that six year period was Stone Cold Steve Austin. My favorite WCW champion in that six year period was Hollywood Hogan. My favorite ECW champion during that period was the franchise Shane Douglas. There you go. This is from at, let's see, D.A. Harris here. D.A. Harris here. Okay, I guess that's how he said it. Would you like to see Kevin Owens feud with Daniel Bryan when he comes back? Um, yes, I would. I'd like to see Daniel Bryan feud with Kevin Owens. That would be an awesome feud. I think both those guys have a lot of Ring of Honor experience. They have a lot of experience out here in California with PWG. They have a lot of a, a solid, independent following where they could both really um, capture the imagination of the nation, if you will, um, and really tell a great story and really do something with it. Um, Will it happen? I don't know. If they keep Brian a, a, a good guy and they keep Owens being a solid, nasty, just like malicious bad guy, then yeah, it'd be an awesome story to tell. And you could tell a story of them having interactions in the past if they really wanted to. They've done it in the past. So it'd be awesome. That'd be cool. 
This is from at Coldblood926. How would you compare Kurt Angle at TNA and Kurt Angle at WWE? World apart. Worlds apart. Um, Kurt Angle and TNA or WWE was the best wrestler that the company ever had. And one of the most entertaining personalities the company ever had. But he was never the guy. He was champion, but it was always just a little bit below Austin, a little bit below Rock, a little bit below Triple H. He wasn't quite the guy. Kringle TNA, the man. Injured as he was, beat up as he was, you know, oftentimes controversial as he was, he was the man in TNA. He was the top guy. He was the multi-time world champion. He was at the forefront of every major storyline at one point or another for years and years. And TNA and Dixie and Jarrett let him shine in a way that what well, WWE let him shine and let him be an awesome wrestler and a great personality. He was never showcased as the top draw in the company. And TNA let him be that. So, worlds apart. Worlds apart between the two. Let's see here. At Bob Good 554, who would you say is the best manager of all time? Jeff Meacham. No. Um, I, I feel I was a good manager, but that's not the public opinion for sure because I'm not very liked in the indie scene. Um, Bobby Heenan was my favorite for a number of years. He's still my personal favorite manager that I ever watched as a kid, even growing up and even looking back on TV now. But I honestly have to say the best manager of all time now, and my and this is my show, so it's my opinion, has to be Paul Heyman. He's done it all. He's managed world champions. He he his guy ended the streak. It's as simple as that. He managed the guy that ended the streak. And he managed that guy to a world championship, and then his successor, and then his successor to the world championship. You can't go any better than that. Thank you all for watching this week. We will see you guys next time with more.